And one of the things we've talked about in the past is whether the twilight of living memory of the Holocaust should be used for some more profound German-Jewish reconciliation, that these are two communities that have held somewhat similar thought processes from the per perspective of mimetic mm -hmm. competition. Maybe, you know, there was a, there were, there was a problem that they were doomed mm -hmm. to run into each other, but that in some sense, um, there are two wounds that need to be healed now that all of the original participants are either quite elderly or, or gone. Do you think that that is informing our conversation? Well, I think, uh, I think there's certainly, um, an element of that between between the two of us, I I think that uh, there's there's probably a degree to which <clears throat> um, the history uh, was so traumatic that uh, that um, people still understate uh, the, this aspect. There was there was something about you know late nineteenth century, early twentieth century Germany where um, the uh, um, Judaism was better integrated into the society than in many other places, and there was something uh, very synergistic, very very generative um, uh, about that. And uh, and uh, and and then you know, um, getting at all these ways that uh, at the, 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 the that it was lost are, are very very hard to do. You know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, sort of a a uh, the the sort of social democratic response to the Hitler era and the Holocaust um, was sort of radically egalitarian. You know, it's, uh, everybody's equal. Um, you shouldn't kill people. Everybody's equally valuable. Uh, and yet, you know, in some ways, what was, you know, Hitler killed the best people. And so there's a way in which the, uh, the social democratic response to, uh, to what happened um, doesn't even come up to the terrible thing that happened. And so in an egalitarian society, well, we don't have quite as many people. We're all equal. Nothing's really changed. But, uh, but well, maybe you have no Jewish people left in Germany, and there's a lot less dynamism uh, in the society as a result. And that's something that people still can't say in Germany, because that's, that's is that right? You feel like it's, uh, you know, <clears throat> like if, if I say it, people won't, you know, they, they, they won't they won't contradict it or anything. But um, but it's uh, it's uh, yeah, no, of course, it's, it's it's sort of profoundly profoundly uncomfortable. So I think I think there is a sense. Uh, yeah, that that uh, you know, it's there's sort of all these strange ways that uh, Germany is still under the shadow of Hitler. Even even you know the, the ways that people are trying to you know exercise Hitler, you know, in some ways uh, have deformed the society where you can't uh, you can't go back to the, the the things that you know worked incredibly well in you know pre World War One Germany. You know, so there was probably a lot that was unhealthy and wrong with it too. But uh, but uh, but yeah, there's a sense that something, um, you know, something. Uh, Something very big has been lost, and there's you know there probably are a Jewish version of this that one could one could articulate uh, um, as well. But uh, but yeah, I think there's something about the synergy that's uh, that's that's very powerful and uh, that, that's quite missing. So you know, for, from from my side of the fence, uh, I was just listening on NPR to a description of Fiddler on the Roof being put on by Joel Gray in Yiddish, and the sound of you know. Jewish middle high German, uh, there's something about it that is shocking in today's era. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's been a Jewish loss. You know, I, I felt this a couple of times. Uh, I avoided, to be honest, going to Germany um, because I didn't want to run into old people and wonder where they had been. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, uh, at uh, Soros' invitation, found myself at a conference in Berlin. And when I checked into the hotel, I heard my last name pronounced in, you know, impeccable German. Mm. And it was both a horrible feeling mm. and a wonderful feeling. Like somehow, weirdly, something was home. Or I went to a restaurant near Checkpoint Charlie with my wife and I was missing a fork. Mm -hmm. And I, the person spoke no English. And I remembered from a, some old story of my father. And I asked for a guppel, which I guess is the Yiddish for mm. fork. And it was close enough and somebody brought me a fork and by uttering a word that G I got gobble 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 okay it's German yes by by going through that exercise uh, I found that when this fork was brought to me I realized that there was some part of my experience in fact that was missing that mm -hmm. this uncomfortable relationship which 
you know, my grandfather, um, when we, when we went through Israel driving, uh, uh, North to South, um, was singing, uh, leader. I mean, he was German was the language mm -hmm. of, of the culture. It was the language of the intellectual mm -hmm. and that never left him. And so I think that weirdly, um, this is the first time because I, I think it'll be too late if we wait for you know, 20 more years because there will be no one to remember, but that there is some opportunity to recognize a dual wound. Yeah. No, I, 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 um, I think, uh, I, th I think the, yeah, I think the challenge on the, on the Germany side is that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of, I had, I had somewhat of a, you know, idiosyncratic background here where we, uh, I was born in Germany, but, we emigrated when I was about a year old and, uh, and, um, and, you know, we spoke German at home and lived in Africa uh, in uh, Namibia where it went to a German speaking school. But, uh, uh, it was, it was very different, I think, from the, uh, from, from the, uh, general post-World War II, uh, German experience. And, uh, and I, um, and so there are, yeah, there are all these things that I can see from the outside looking in to, Germany that I think are, um, you know, it's still like, I still have a connection to it. And there's sort of all these ways that, you know, you know, visited it as a child many times and there's, there's something that I connect with. And then it's, it's obviously like, like super different, you know, and, and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the sort of, um, you know, the contrast of Germany and California I always like to give is that you know, California is optimistic, but desperate and Germany is uh, pessimistic, but comfortable. But the uh, from a you know, Californian perspective, the pest, the, the incredibly deep pessimism is um, is 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 really really striking, and uh, and even on that one dimension, I think uh, um, you know Jewish culture is, is super different. Well, and I feel like Jewish culture is in part starting to attenuate that we don't feel. Um, I mean, this is this is crazy talk, but we never thought that there was anything positive about anti-Semitism, And obviously it's not a positive thing, but there were positive externalities in that it allowed us to push ourselves very, very hard because we always knew that we weren't going to get a fair shake. And that uh, at any moment you might need to flee to some place that was less dangerous. And I feel that as we become comfortable, we've lost some of the dynamism, which is a hard thing to admit, but I, I do think that that is in part true, just as I see, you know, and I see this in, in Germany, Germany's intellectual contribution was so profound that nothing uh, post World War II seems to suggest the mm -hmm. same nation, and I I think that that loss is a profound loss not to Germany but to the entire world. Yes, it's uh, it's you know, and of course one of the challenges is you know we can you can sort of describe these things, we can speculate on you know you know some of the ca causal things. It's uh, I think it's a, it's somehow we don't want to go back. We we can't go back. Can't and don't want to. I agree. And uh, and so uh, yeah, there is there is a history, and you know, I I, yeah, I think something's been lost in both uh, Germany and, and in Jewish culture. Uh, and uh, how how one how one reconstitutes this is uh, is is even if we can convince people of you know the causes and the losses, uh, what you actually do about it is is super hard to say. And that's, uh, yeah, that's sort of always the, the, the strange dynamic in this. Um, something I'd be open to us working on at some future point, if we can find the time.